Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we have an interesting combo with Halifire Heart and Tiku Divination as the two weapons are highly underused by the community but actually are big deal breakers when it comes down to their purpose in Season 23. And since any weapon could apply scorch to targets, Tiku's effect has become even more chaotic in the face of everything and combining this with Halifire Heart will actually allow us to do some extreme levels of damage that the weapon is not so used to. So by using the build, you will get a 350% ability regen via your exotic, mass solar damage boost, and easy to access debuff that will keep the build afloat in GMs. Simple and yet powerful, this is what you need to do to achieve this. To start, you're going to want to have Soul Invictus where Soul Ability Final Blows creates sunspots. Your abilities regenerate faster and super drains more slower while in it. Then you want to have Raw and Flames where Final Blow with Solar Abilities increase the damage of your Solar Abilities. Raw and Flames will play a pivotal role in how strong our melee and grenades can get over time as they will allow us to deep with targets when revitalizing the blast is active. You do have the freedom to select which melee or grenade type you want to use with thanks to the Halifire's Heart exotic trait. Looking into the fragments, Ember of Torture where power melee hits against targets makes you radiant, Ember of Epirium, where Solar Weapon or Ability Final Blows extend the usage of Radiant and Restoration. Ember of Sharp, where your Solar Ignition spreads Scorch to others. And Ember of Ashes, where you apply more Scorch stats to targets. The following chosen is going to further enhance our bone the moment we become Radiant and can apply Scorch to targets. Both Sharp and Ashes will make it easier to spread our effects even further within the basis of the weapon, while Emporium is going to allow us to retain our Radiant effect the more kills we get. This is important as without the Flint Striker effect active, we cannot inflict Scorch unless we are using our base abilities. The only one you can debate about having is the Ember of Torches since Flint Striker is able to get us Radiant quite easily. On the other hand, you will always be able to get Radiant all the time or in desperate measures, hence having Torches available. This is a 50-50 fragment that I found to be useful when needed most but this might vary for most players so do play around with this area. For the modern stats, both resilience and discipline will be focused on as key objectives. We do also have strength to focus on as well, but this stat alone won't need a huge boost unlike the others. Our resilience stat is at a tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction against enemy groups. We do not have any additional mods or perks to apply to the stat as having the 30% damage reduction is already a huge bonus to use. It will allow us to use our tower and barricades more at a 44 second cooldown but nothing too crazy from there. Our discipline is at tier 10, which will count us a 37 second cooldown using fusion grenades. Although any grenade is fine to pick from here, since Halifire Heart Exotic Trait will greatly reduce the cooldown of all abilities, having fusion grenades will allow us to use them much more faster when needed, and also allow us to activate Revitalize and Blast debuff effect on a continuous basis. With the Exotic Armor 350% buff, I've added the following mods to help further increase our grenade usage rate. Impact Induction for a 12% boost and Bomber for a 12% boost. You don't need anything else from here, trust me. Lastly, Strength is at a tier 4 for a 1 minute 23 second cooldown via Throwing Hammer. As is the Throwing Hammer, we can easily replace Lost Minute Energy as long as we collect it. Of course, this won't always be the case all the time, but Halifire Heart Effect will easily regen what we have lost over time. I have added the Momentum Transfer mod for a 12% mini regen via grenade hits, but this is all the stat we'll need going forward. In this section, we'll be covering the armor charges and additional mods. Charged up times 1 will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as we play and collect, while stacks and stacks will increase our orbs collected by 2. Next, adding the Solar Siphon and Powerful Attraction mod will make it easier to collect and create orbs of power around us. Then we have added the Solar Surge mod times 2 to increase our base solar weapon damage by 17% and also added the Time Dilation mod to increase the mod DK time by 15 seconds. Lastly, having Ashes to Assets mod will greatly help with getting our super up fast and activating our exotic trait. For weapons, we have Tiku's Divination that is an exotic bow that has around a 580 draw time and the unique effect of detonating on targets. A great weapon to use with add clearing on its own. The current mods applied to it will allow the weapon to now apply Scorch and Ignite targets if you play your cards right. Although this won't be around forever, the weapon is more than capable of dealing with enemies even without the Scorch and Ignite mods applied. I highly recommend players to get this as it's just too good to miss. 
although the Sunshot is also another choice to pick if you want something similar in function. For Heavy with the Apex Predator rocket launcher that has bipod and reconstruction, one of the best solar rockets in game, the following accompanies the build when we need more firepower against certain enemies in Destiny. Although it has no tracking applied, which would be helpful against the agile targets, the following is still impressive nonetheless without such additions. This however is not an easy weapon to get nor an easy role to get for most new players, so if you are new and you want to use the build still, I would just suggest that using any sort of heavier choice until you get the option to farm it at a later date. With the combination of two exotics that get severely overlooked by the endgame community, this combo works out pretty well for this season and supposedly the next one as well. The idea that being able to scorch and ignite targets via the seasonal mods this season is exciting as it allows certain types of weapons to be further enhanced with a unique add-on. Polaris Lance is the prime example of this as it has now become the go-to weapon players use for this season alone. However, not many people talk about the Tikus in this instance since applying the given mods will allow your explosives to do even more explosives on hand. As long as the correct seasonal mods are applied such as Torch, Kindling and Flint Striker, your weapon's explosive becomes even more chaotic than normal. But upon using the build, I thought, how can I make this even more better? And that's when it came to me that Halifire Heart is underrated, but also highly expertise in such a role for the build. Since Halifire will grant us a 350% ability regen as long as we don't use our super, I thought combining the two with a fast grenade regen and both torches to get regen as a backup, and both Aperium for extending our regen effect upon kills, and two solo surge mods will allow the build to fully invest its damage solely into the build alone and make it worthwhile when using it with little sacrifice involved. Now this has gone exceptionally well for my experience as my bow is now hitting double to triple the damage it wouldn't usually do without the buffs added. On top of that I can now use my abilities to the highest degree without the need of worry and ultimately I can apply a debuff via my seasonal mods as I see fit aka Torch and Revitalizing Blast. The loadout has become a nice all-rounder build designed for engaging large groups of enemies quickly and efficiently, but also being strong enough to take on the mini bosses the bosses with the wealth of tools and items available to do so. Although the build is designed for the endgame players, I can see this being comfortable for the returning and newer players who wish for a build that doesn't require a lot of input. Such a build is easily customizable and can be used even after the season has ended, so it's not designed to be a one and done thing. You will lose some of the key bonuses as mentioned after the season ends, but it will still work nonetheless. Overall, I like the build quite a lot as it allowed me to play around with the two exotics that I don't honestly play around with so much. Such a combo is extremely good when against a large group of enemy and provides enough firepower and recovery that user can freely adapt to changes. I recommend this solo build for endgame players alike. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this available, I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.